What? Oh, okay. Thank, thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Jesus today tells us to remain in him. Remain in me. Remain in me. And all I can think about is how that takes effort, that takes energy, that takes intentionality. And part of why we join and, and gather every single day is to show that intentionality, to show that effort, that we want to remain in Jesus, that we want to remain close to him. And we want the truth that is such an important thing to know about ourselves, that we want the truth. So let's acknowledge that desire for the truth, that desire to remain in Jesus, but also that desire to push away anything that gets in the way of that truth, anything that is an obstacle to that truth, and certainly anything that is an obstacle to remaining in Jesus. And we say, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Enlighten, O God of compassion, the hearts of your children, sanctified by penance, and in your kindness grant those you stir to a sense of devotion, a gracious hearing when they cry out to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. King Nebuchadnezzar said, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you will not serve my God or worship the golden statue that I set up? Be ready now to fall down and worship the statue I had made. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, flute, lyre, harp, psaltery, bagpipe, and all the other musical instruments, otherwise you shall be instantly cast into the white-hot furnace. And who is the God who can deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered King Nebuchadnezzar, There is no need for us to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, can save us from the white-hot furnace and from your hands, O king, may he save us. But even if he will not know, O king, that we will not serve your God or worship the golden statue that you set up. King Nebuchadnezzar's face became livid with utter rage against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times more than usual and had some of the strongest men in his army bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and cast them into the white-hot furnace. Nebuchadnezzar rose in haste and asked his nobles, Did we not cast three men bound into the fire? Assuredly, O king, they answered. But he replied, I see four men, unfettered and unhurt, walking in the fire, and the fourth looks like a son of God. Nebuchadnezzar explained, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who sent his angel to deliver the servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the royal command and yielded their bodies rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the firmament of heaven, praiseworthy and glorious forever. Glory and praise forever. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you remain in my word, you will truly be my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are descendants of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Amen, amen, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. A slave does not remain in a household forever, but a son always remains. So if the son frees you, then you will truly be free. I know that you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no room among you. I tell you what I have seen in the Father's presence. Then do what you have heard from the Father. They answered and said to him, Our father is Abraham. Jesus said to them, If you were Abraham's children, you would be doing the works of Abraham. But now you are trying to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. You are doing the works of your father. So they said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God and am here. I did not come on my own, but he sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For some reason, after reading this gospel today and thinking about what it takes to know the truth, what it takes to remain in the truth, to remain in the truth that God wants us to, I thought about, and my mind wandered back to, this series I saw, this mini-series I saw on HBO called Chernobyl. And this series was about um, what happened in Chernobyl in, uh, in 1986 and how the nuclear reactor exploded and the effect that it had uh, on the people of that area, but almost the entire world. And there's a couple horrifying things that happen uh, in this series, and, and again, it's historical. And one of them is how, how to great lengths the, the Soviet Union goes to keep this, to keep the truth like bottled, they just, they just wanna keep it hidden. And they can't because the radiation was so present in the air, they were getting traces of it all around the world. But the other horrifying thing, and it's something that's worth mentioning, was how people didn't want to face the truth of it. They made incredible excuses. Um, they wanted things that would make them feel more comfortable with it. And even when there was evidence right in front of them, they would say, no, that's not, that's not it. That's, that's impossible. And the one scene that I'm thinking about was the people who lived in the nearby town uh, to the nuclear reactor. When they saw that it exploded, it, it it was, it was like funny in a sort of way. And they went out of their houses and they wanted to watch this fire because it was beautiful. And they didn't realize that they were exposing themselves to all of this radiation. I mean, more than, than like get, was given off at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And this is actually historical. A group of these people, families, kids, went to this bridge and they watched the fire and they didn't realize that they were just exposing themselves. And every single person uh, on this bridge, bridge probably ended up dying. But there's this really, there's this funny but hor horrible scene where a man is talking to his wife and they're holding their baby. And she, the wife says something to the effect of, like, Should, shouldn't we be worried about the radiation? And the man says, oh, no, don't worry. I have a friend who works at the reactor and he says, if you get a little bit of radiation exposure, you drink a bottle of vodka and, and you sleep it off. And she says, who's your friend? He's like, oh, he's the janitor. And he's like, well, what would a janitor know about this? Uh, and, and then she hugs him. And then we see later on that they were both, like a day later, incredibly sick and probably and, and most likely died. But I thought of this scene because we, 
We think the truth is whatever is just most available to us. We look for the truth in the resources that are just right next to us, whether it be a janitor or whether it be the, the first piece of news that pops up on our news feed. It takes more intentionality and energy to find the truth. The truth is not something that just falls down upon us. The truth is not something that we can just take for granted. Uh, truth is something that we have to search for. We have to look for it. We have to be intentional about it. And, you know, and this might be kind of cliche, but the truth will make us uncomfortable. The truth will challenge us. The truth will ask and maybe even demand something of us. And so this effort, or when Jesus says, you know, remain in my word, if you remain in my word, that's not just inertia or gravity. We don't just fall into that. It takes some effort. It takes pain. It takes something on our behalf. And these people that Jesus are arguing with, they don't want to do that. They want to just remain where they are. They're just giving into the inertia of their lives. And when we can think of these three brothers in the first reading, it took some effort for them to stand up to Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> it would have been very easy for them to just say, you know what, I'll just bow down to this other God. That would have been a convenient truth. That would have been like them just listening to the janitor. So today, let's just think of maybe those convenient truths that we just kind of give into because, you know, it would just be too hard to listen to anything else. It would be too uncomfortable. Maybe those truths that we tell about ourselves, our truths that we tell about our family, our truths that we tell about our society, and really maybe ask God, where, where can I go, what can I do to just get away from these convenient resources of the truth? and really challenge myself, really, really challenge myself. Just to end on a positive note, Jesus will bring us to that. If we go to Jesus, Jesus will somehow give that to us. But the real Jesus, not just our idea of Jesus, um, not just the Jesus that makes us feel good or makes us comfortable, but the real Jesus. Let's encounter that Jesus, the real Jesus the true Jesus, the Jesus that wants to set us free with the truth, the Jesus who wants to set us free with the truth. So with a great desire for the truth, for the truth that, that Jesus wants to set us free with, we lift up our prayers to God. Not just our ideas of what we want or what we think we need, but receptive to God wants, to what God wants to give to us. And so let's pray for our world, our world that is very much in transition, uh, a world that is still recovering and reeling from this pandemic a world that struggles to find what is true and what is not true, what sources of information are credible and not credible. May the spirit of truth be triumphant in these days. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for our church, a church that has valued education from the very beginning. May we continue to be champions of not only Catholic education, but just that, that spirit of looking for the truth. Jesus said, seek and you shall find. May we nourish in one another and may the church nourish in our world that spirit and that great desire to find the truth. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray for the sick of our community, those sick with COVID-19, but all of our sick, all of those who desperately need our prayers, who desperately need community, for them we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we lift up one of the members of our community, Lorena Munoz, for the healing she needs, for the consolation of her family, but that Lorena may know she has a community here and that she is loved very, very much. 
For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And on today, uh, today is the seventh anniversary of Kiara uh, Cattleberger, of the, the seventh anniversary of her death. And so we pray for the repose of her soul, the consolation of her family, and the consolation of her friends, especially Sylvia. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And the father of one of our community members of, of Gina, her, her father, George Bond, passed away yesterday, I believe. And so we pray for the repose of his soul and the consolation of Gina and her son, Johnny. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. So Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you with that great desire and great openness to the truth, the truth about ourselves, about one another, and especially your truth. Please shower us with that truth and nothing else. And we pray all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the, work, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who become for us the bread of life. Amen. Blessed be God forever. Just water and wine may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humble himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. Receive back, O Lord, the sacrificial offerings which you have given to be offered in the, to the honor of your name, and grant that they may become remedies for our healing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servants, George Bond and Chiara Kataberger, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they, who are united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, her husband, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let's just take a moment and just bring forward that great desire for the truth and that great desire that that desire might be true. And with that desire in our hearts for the truth about ourselves, one another, and about God, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. So let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, Dona nobis pace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen.
May the blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. I invite you, please, to close your eyes and to just go deep, deep within yourself to that place that is deeper than deep and more real than real and be in contact with that place that wants truth. That doesn't want lies. That doesn't want falsities. And reach out with that part of you to God. And we pray together. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself entirely to you. Never allow me to be separated from you. Amen. God has brought us to the kingdom of his beloved son in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, bring us heavenly medicine that they may purge all evil from our heart and strengthen us with eternal protection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace and the truth of the Lord. Thanks be to God.